Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 1.5 on American Citizenship, and let's talk about one of my all-time favorite Americans, Arnold. You know, Schwarzenegger. And if you catch him at the right moment, Arnold is one proud American. So much so, in fact, that he ran for elected office and became the governor, or the governor of California. But here's the cool thing. Arnold was born in Austria. You know, the hills are alive with the sound of music, Austria. So instead of being born here as an American citizen, he immigrated from Austria and became an American citizen. Well, how does someone become an American citizen? And more importantly, what changes are occurring when it comes to people like Arnold becoming citizens? We're going to answer those questions today, and with that said, go to the next slide. Before we can talk about what makes someone a good American citizen, we have to figure out what makes someone an American citizen in the first place. And it's a bit more complicated than just citizenship by birth. The 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution defines a citizen as all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. They are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. So, the two ways for a person to obtain citizenship under the Constitution are birth and naturalization. My brother and I were born here, Arnold was born somewhere else, and he naturalized. We are all citizens of the United States. These are the requirements to obtain citizenship by birth. You were born in the United States or certain territories or outlying possessions of the United States that are subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. Or in other words, you were born in the USA. You were born somewhere that is considered United States territory. There's another way as well. You were born to a parent or parents who were United States citizens at the time of your birth and who applied for a consular report of birth abroad from an embassy or consulate. In other words, mom and dad are American citizens and you were born in a foreign country. As long as you all filed the right paperwork with the United States Embassy, you too are considered a citizen by birth. Go to the next slide. For those of us who are born as American citizens, we sometimes take our citizenship for granted. But if you ask anyone who's been through the naturalization process what it's like, they will tell you that becoming an American citizen is hard. So let's talk about citizenship by naturalization. You must be a permanent resident of the United States of America for at least three to five years, and you must not have left the country for a certain time period during your residency. Usually, you must live in the country for at least half of the time that you were a permanent resident. So during the five years you were a permanent resident, we want to see that you you were living in the USA. And then once you actually apply for citizenship, you must live in a state or a district within the United States for at least three months. And then there's this. You must demonstrate your knowledge of American history and principles, as well as the ability to read, speak, and write words in ordinary usage using the English language in the dreaded citizenship test. Unlike citizens who are born here, naturalized citizens must prove that they know things about the United States of America. Go to the next slide.
It's not enough that you live here for a certain amount of time and that you can pass a test. There are other requirements of a naturalized citizen. A person applying for citizenship must have a good moral character, be registered with the Selective Service, we call that the draft and you'll learn about that, be willing to serve in the armed forces or some alternative to military service, and be someone who did not desert or illegally leave the United States armed forces or were discharged due to alien status. In other words, you didn't get tossed out of the military because they found out that you were not a citizen of the United States. If you can prove all these things, meet the residency requirements and pass the test, citizens must also take an oath when finally becoming an American citizen. They must swear or affirm that they will support and defend the United States Constitution and they must swear or affirm an oath of allegiance to the United States. Natural born citizens do not have to do this. Go to the next slide. So now you know that people are either born as American citizens or they become naturalized American citizens. But that's not the end of the story. We still need to talk about immigration and naturalization in America today. Immigration and naturalization, particularly in the 20th century, has led to an increasingly diverse society. And here's what happened. The Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965 changed the way in which individuals could immigrate and become citizens. It replaced nationality quotas with prioritization for skilled workers and family members. What does that mean? America used to say, we will take that many people from that country. Now we say, we will take anybody as long as you have a specific job set and we'll take your family as well. What has happened? People from many different nationalities can now immigrate and obtain citizenship. And immigration is changing the makeup of our citizen population. In 1965, 84% of Americans were non-Hispanic whites, 4% were Hispanic, and less than 1% were Asian. In 2015, 62% of Americans are white, 18% of Americans are Hispanic, and Asians count as 6% of the population, and by 2065, nearly 20% of the people in the country will have been born outside of America, and 55% of growth will come from immigrants and their children. Mitt Romney explains to us what is happening. We are a nation of immigrants. We are the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the ones who wanted a better life, the driven ones, the ones who woke up at the night hearing that voice telling them that life in that place called America could be better. That voice is still out there and we are still welcoming immigrants into our country so that they can become American citizens today. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.